Hello, my dear students. Welcome to English 810 for the Vocational Education Studies. We are going to enter Unit 8 today, and we will start it with Lesson 7, Writing a Memo. By the end of this lesson, we are going to achieve three main objectives. The first one is to use formal language to identify the layout of a formal memo and to write a memo. So, let me ask you this question, my dear students. Why do we write a memo or when do we write a memo? There are some occasions that we, we need to write a memo at, like launching a new product. For example, if you work at a certain company and you are going to produce or introduce a new product, you need to write a memo to your staff to tell them about the product itself. Giving instruction of how to use something. For example, there is a new system uh, at your work or at your school. There has to be some rules to be followed. So, you have to write these rules in a memo. Reimbursement for staff travel expenses. For example, there are some companies who send their staff outside to study or for work purposes, business travel. So when they come back, they ask for the cash back, which is reimbursement for staff travel experience. Setting rules for a workplace or a school. Now, if you are, for example, uh, the leader of some students, a group of students, and you want to introduce something, anything, a program or a contest, you will set some rules to them, so you will need to write a formal memo. So, we come to know here that a memo is written only in formal occasions. You can't have informal uh, memo, so it is usually used either in companies or schools or let's say official sectors. So, as I have previously mentioned, it has to be formal and if you want to write a formal memo, it means you have to use formal language. Let's see the expressions which determines formal language. I would like to instead of saying I want, it is not uh, uh, written to your friend or someone so close to you, it is formal, so you have to start it with I would like to. Please note the following, if you are going to list some rules, you have to tell them please note the following instead of saying read the rules, because again I'm mentioning it as formal in order to, instead of saying because, in order to is more formal. You must like you are showing them that the thing is essential. Unlike in the past, this is expression is used when you want to compare between a change in a system, for example. For example, let's assume that you are going to use e-books now instead of regular books, like before. So, you will tell them that you are going to, uh, for example, write your username and password to have the material, unlike in the past, it's not regular box. Thank you for your cooperation. This is a very formal way of ending a memo or even a letter. Why do I use it? Because the memo is formal. I can't say just thanks or goodbye or take care. It has to be this way. Now, let's move to the layout of writing a memo. Pay attention, my dear students, to this. All the formal memos has to start this way. It should address the person who's going to read or receive the memo to, from, date, and the subject. It has to have the name of the receiver, the sender, the date, and the subject. Or you could just say RE, the reference. What is the topic about? You will start with an introduction. 
at the introduction, you will write the purpose of writing the memo. Or let me say, paraphrase in other words, the reason. I'm writing this memo because I want to tell you about the rules, for example. Then you will list the main points that you want to explain. I want you to pay attention to this word. When I say points, it means the things that you are going to talk about. It depends, of course, on your memo. has to be in bullet points. Finally, the conclusion. You will, of course, thank the receiver and there will be closing remarks. This will be easier for you if you see it in a proper structure. But before that, I want you now to imagine. Let's imagine that you are the school principal and you will write a memo to your students about a certain topic. What is the topic? Let's see. You will write a memo explaining the important rules related to a new building in the school. Let's continue imagining. Now, you are the principal of the school and your school opened a new building. So, you want to tell them some rules and some tips to be taken for the new building. This will be the layout or let's say the proper structure of writing a memo. As I have pre previously mentioned, you're going to address the receiver. You will write the name of the sender, which is you. You will specify the date. And here we have re, or you could just say the subject. So, let's see. To all students. This memo will be sent to all the students of the school. From school's principal. The date, it could be any date. And the subject is new buildings, important rules. So let's start with the introduction. As I have previously told you, the introduction should mention the purpose of writing the memo. Our school is happy to announce the opening of a new building at the school. However, there are some rules for all the students to follow related to the new building. For this reason, I would like to point out a few of these mm -hmm. rules. Pay attention. When I said, for this reason, I want to tell you the purpose of writing this memo. Let's move now to the body. Remember when I told you it has to be in points? Now these are the bold points that I am going to talk about in my memo. The first part is about the labs. Since it's in the school and it's a new building, so it should have labs. Let's see. The first point, students may use the computer lab from. 8 a.m. to 12 p.m. only. Now, this is a rule. Another rule related to the labs. Students must make sure to switch off their computer's device before leaving the lab. Now, I give them two instructions related to the bold point would be more than enough. Let's move to the second one, which is the library. The first rule or instruction is... All students should have a card to borrow any book from the library. The second rule is students must return the books at the right time. Otherwise, a penalty charge will be applied. So, I have stated two rules regarding the library. Let's go on. We're going to have two extra bold points. The third one is canteen. And then there are some instructions that we're going to talk about. Let's go to the canteen. What are the rules related to the canteen, my dear students? Pay attention. Number one, students may buy food from the canteen from 9 a.m. to 10.30 a.m. only. So here I'm telling them the timing of uh, using the canteen. The second rule is students should stand in the queue line without causing distraction to others. And this is another important rule. Last but not least, bold, uh, bold point is, 
how to transfer from your previous class to the new building. As I have told you before, now we have a new building at the school and maybe you wish to transfer from the old one to the new one. There are some rules that you have to follow in order to transfer. What are the rules? The first one is, you may fill a form at the administration requesting a transfer. Number two is, the school's principal has to approve the request, then you will be transferred. So I'm giving them the instruction on how to transfer from the previous building to the new one. I have mentioned four bold points, so this is more than enough. We come to the conclusion, which is part three, here where you thank the receiver. Thank you for your cooperation and following these guidelines. Please let me know if you have any questions and I'm done. This is the final paragraph that should be included in a memo. And before I finish this lesson, I'll give you a very simple task where I'll ask you to write a, a memo about any topic of your choice. Here where you have to work your imagination. Imagine that you are a manager of a company and you are listing some rules regarding any product, for example, and follow the outline that we have discussed before. You may refer to your book, English 810, which is Project Success 3, page 112. Don't forget, my dear students, you need to use formal language. We come to the end of our lesson. Thank you so much for watching and I hope it added something new to your values. See you soon. Goodbye.